right, folks, today we're diving into a paper that asks, can reinforcement learning be the ultimate multitasker? The star of the show is a method called, well, let's talk about its name for a second. Is it Mr. Q, MRQ, or maybe just MRQ, like a secret agent code name? Let's go with MRQ. Sounds cooler, right? So what's the big idea? MRQ is short for model-based representations for Q learning. It's a model-free RL method that borrows some tricks from model-based approaches like smarter reward structures, but skips the heavy planning overhead. The goal is to create a general purpose RL algorithm that works across different tasks without needing a ton of tweaks. Think of it as the Swiss army knife of RL. Ready to dive in? Let's go. We often hear that RL is the ultimate toolbox for solving complex problems. But in practice, it's rarely that straightforward. Most RL algorithms end up finely tuned for specific tasks or benchmarks, so they don't generalize too well when moved to new domains. Now there's a promising approach called model-based RL, where the system builds an internal model of the world to help with planning. These methods work well, but they're slow and complex, making them hard to apply broadly. So here's the big question this paper tackles. Can we create a model-free RL algorithm that's still general purpose? Enter MRQ a deep RL method that borrows some tricks from model-based approaches, like richer reward structures, but skips the overhead of explicit planning. The idea is to get the best of both worlds, strong performance without the extra computational cost. And the results? Pretty promising. Take a look at figure one here. It shows MRQ competing across four different RL environments, each with unique challenges. Compared to Dreamer v3 and TDMPC2, MRQ requires fewer parameters, trains faster, and evaluates more efficiently. The benchmarks range from classic locomotion tasks to high-dimensional pixel-based games, showing off its versatility. The takeaway? Model-free RL doesn't have to be inefficient. With the right tweaks, it can be both powerful and practical. This paper sets the stage for a new way of thinking about RL, pushing towards truly general-purpose agents. But here's the thing. Most RL algorithms aren't actually general purpose. They're built for specific problems. For example, some are great at handling discrete actions, while others excel at continuous actions. Some work well with vector-based observations, while others are designed for pixel-based inputs. Because of this, every category needs its own algorithmic tweaks and hyperparameter tuning. Take Rainbow and TD3, for instance. Rainbow is built for Atari games, while TD3 is designed for Mujocone tasks. Even though they're both model-free RL methods, they don't share much in common. Check out Table 1 here. It compares their hyperparameters. You'll see that TD3 favors larger batch sizes and faster updates, while Rainbow uses a more gradual optimization strategy. Now, some general-purpose RL methods do exist, like policy gradient methods and evolutionary algorithms. But these often require strong assumptions about the environment and they don't always perform as well as domain-specific methods. Recent model-based methods like Dreamer v3 and TDMPC2 have made progress toward generalization, but they come with added complexity. So, what's the idea here? The authors want to take the benefits of model-based RL, like how it structures its learning objectives, but apply them in a model-free setting. Their method, MRQ, learns representations that capture a nearly linear relationship between state action pairs and value estimates, if this works, it could eliminate the need for fine-tuning hyperparameters across environments. And they test this idea rigorously. MRQ is evaluated on four different RL benchmarks and over a hundred environments. The goal? To see if it can match the performance of state-of-the-art methods without requiring algorithmic or hyperparameter changes. To understand how MRQ works, Let's take a step back and talk about the basics of RL. At its core, RL relies on a mathematical framework called a Markov Decision Process, or MDP for short. This framework defines everything the agent needs to make decisions, the states it can be in, the actions it can take, how those actions change the environment, and how rewards are given. The goal of the agent is to learn a policy that picks actions to maximize long-term rewards. One way to do this is with value-based methods. These methods estimate a function that predicts how much future reward an agent can expect from a given state and action. But here's the tricky part. This function needs to be learned over time. To keep training stable, deep RL methods often use something called target networks. These are copies of the value function that are updated more slowly than the main network. It's like having a safety net to prevent things from going off the rails. Now beyond these basics, 
The paper introduces a technique called dynamics-based representation learning. This helps RL agents generalize by structuring how they learn state-action relationships. Instead of learning policies from scratch, this approach builds a representation of how the environment behaves. The authors suggest that this kind of learning can replace explicit model-based planning while still capturing useful structure in the data. Another important concept here is state abstraction. Instead of treating every possible state as unique, Abstraction methods look for similarities. This is super useful in complex environments where learning every tiny detail would be impractical. By grouping similar states together, the RL agent can generalize better and avoid overfitting to specific situations. Finally, the authors transition into discussing their method, MRQ. They argue that it closely resembles existing state action representation methods, but differs in how it structures information loss across the reward and transition functions. The goal? to improve efficiency while maintaining strong performance. Now let's talk about one of the key ideas behind MRQ, intermediate embeddings. Most RL algorithms directly map states and actions to values without considering deeper structure. But MRQ takes a different approach. Instead of working with raw inputs, it first transforms states and state action pairs into a more abstract representation. These embeddings then serve as inputs to both the policy and value function. Why does this help? Well, first, it provides richer learning signals based on how the environment behaves, rather than just relying on value estimates that can be unstable. Second, it creates a unified, abstract space where irrelevant details are filtered out, making learning more robust. To formalize this idea, the authors decompose the value function into two components, feature representations and weight parameters. They compare two ways to learn these weights. The model-free approach updates them using standard RL techniques while the model-based approach estimates them by rolling out predictions of future rewards and dynamics. Here's where it gets interesting. Theorem 1 shows that both approaches end up at the same solution. This suggests that model-free learning can approximate the benefits of model-based learning without requiring full environment modeling. And Theorem 2 takes this further by proving that the accuracy of the model-based solution depends on how well the system predicts environment dynamics. The takeaway? You don't always need an explicit model to benefit from structured learning. By using embeddings and structured representation learning, you can achieve similar results in a more lightweight way. Deep RL often struggles with unstable training, and one big issue comes from how policies and learned representations interact. If an RL model is learning a policy while also learning an internal representation of the environment, those two processes can interfere with each other, making learning inconsistent. To fix this, the paper introduces a loss function that balances two goals learning representations that align with rewards, and ones that capture how the environment changes. But here's the problem. The original approach has issues. The learned features depend on future actions chosen by the policy, which makes training unstable. Also, if everything is optimized together, the system can get stuck in bad local minima, leading to trivial solutions. So, what's the fix? First, instead of making the learned features depend on actions, they only depend on states. This makes training more stable, while still capturing important environment details. Second, they use a target network. Instead of constantly updating based on the latest data, the system stabilizes learning by slowly adjusting a separate reference model. A key result here is theorem three, which shows that even if the learned features don't perfectly match the true value function, they can still be useful for learning optimal policies. This suggests that deep RL systems don't need a perfectly accurate model of the environment to succeed just a structured way to learn from data. This sets up the next part of the paper, where they show how their method performs in practice. Now, let's get into the core algorithm of MRQ. The key idea is to learn an embedding that captures the state-action relationship in a way that aligns with the true value function. Since perfect approximation isn't possible, the method uses non-linear function approximation to estimate values from these embeddings. The learning process is structured in several steps. First, states are transformed into embeddings using a state encoder. Then, state action pairs are embedded separately, allowing the system to represent different input modalities while maintaining a unified learning structure. These embeddings are passed to a predictor, which estimates future states, rewards, and whether an episode will end. To make learning stable, MRQ applies a target network strategy. Instead of updating everything at once, some parameters are updated periodically to prevent instability. Note. Another technique they use is reward scaling, which normalizes reward values over time. This prevents extreme values from dominating learning. The encoder's loss function has three components. It ensures that rewards are correctly predicted, transitions between states make sense, 
and episode terminations are modeled accurately. The final loss function balances these terms with different weightings. This setup allows MRQ to handle different types of input while maintaining stable training. Hence, by structuring learning in this way, it avoids common RL pitfalls like unstable updates and bad local minima. One of the biggest challenges in RL is making sure the agent learns stable and reliable transitions. This section focuses on two key losses that help with that. First, there's the dynamics loss, which ensures the model accurately predicts how states transition over time. Instead of using a full state action-based prediction, it only depends on the state itself, making learning more stable. The second is the terminal loss, which helps the model predict whether an episode is ending, preventing it from making incorrect assumptions about when to stop. For value learning, MRQ builds on TD3, which is known for improving stability by training two separate value functions and using the smaller one to guide learning. This prevents overestimation errors that can occur in RL. Instead of using single-step rewards, MRQ predicts multiple steps into the future, making it more sample efficient. The authors also apply a Huber loss instead of a simple squared loss, which prevents extreme values from throwing off training. Finally, the policy update uses a deterministic policy gradient approach, meaning it directly optimizes the action selection process. A small regularization term is added to keep the policy from overfitting to specific states. To handle different types of action spaces, the authors apply different tricks. For discrete actions, they use the Gumbel softmax trick, and for continuous actions, they use a ton activation to keep actions within valid bounds. Together, these techniques improve the stability and efficiency of training, ensuring MRQ can generalize across different types of environments. Now let's talk about the experiments. The goal here isn't just to beat existing methods, but to show that MRQ can perform well across diverse tasks using the same set of hyperparameters. Check out figure two here. It plots how different RL methods learn over time. The benchmarks cover a wide range of RL challenges. First, there's gym locomotion, which focuses on simulated walking and running tasks in the Mujoko environment. Then, there's DMC proprioceptive, which involves robotic control using sensor data instead of images. A third set, DMC Visual, takes the same tasks but replaces vector-based inputs with pixel-based images, making learning harder. Finally, there's Atari, which evaluates MRQ on classic video game tasks requiring discrete action control. The key takeaway? MRQ performs competitively, with both domain-specific algorithms and general-purpose methods. It's tested against strong baselines like Dreamer V3, TDMPC2, and PPO. The results show that MRQ can match or exceed these methods without requiring different hyperparameters for different benchmarks. But to put this in perspective, training times vary widely between environments. In DMC tasks, 500k time steps correspond to 1m frames in the simulator, while in Atari, 2.5m time steps correspond to 10m frames. Cell. When you look at the learning curves, Keep in mind that they're scaled differently. Overall, the results suggest that MRQ is an efficient, model-free alternative that can generalize well across multiple types of RL tasks. One of the big takeaways from these experiments is that RL doesn't have a one-size-fits-all solution. Different methods perform well on different tasks, a pattern often called the no-free-lunch theorem in machine learning. MRQ performs best in deep mind control DMC, benchmarks, showing its ability to generalize across vector-based and pixel-based observation spaces. It falls slightly behind TD7 in gym locomotion tasks, but overall, it's the strongest method for continuous control. In Atari, Dreamer V3 outperforms MRQ, but it does so with a model that has 40 times more parameters. Compared to model-free baselines like PPO, DQN, and Rainbow, MRQ performs better in discrete action settings. To better understand what design choices impact MRQ's performance, the authors conducted a design study, summarized in Table 2 here. This study tested variations of MRQ's architecture and loss functions to see how much they affected performance. Some key findings. Switching to a linear value function instead of a nonlinear one significantly reduced performance. Changing the dynamics target to rely on a state action encoder instead of a separate state-based embedding introduced instability. Removing the target encoder hurt performance across the board. Using one-step returns instead of multi-step returns degraded long-term learning, especially in Atari. Room. Removing reward scaling introduced instability in certain environments. The bottom line? MRQ's design is carefully attuned to balance stability and generalization. Even small tweaks, like how rewards are scaled or how value functions are structured, can lead to big differences in performance. The discussion here highlights an important takeaway. 
Balancing theoretical ideas with practical adjustments is crucial in RL. The design study confirms that MRQ's architectural choices were well thought out. Two key findings stand out. First, simply increasing the model's complexity in the nonlinear model version didn't improve performance. Instead, keeping an approximately linear relationship with the value function mattered more. Second, Jim and Atari benchmarks behave differently, and certain tweaks that worked well in one setting hurt performance in the other. This suggests that RL algorithms can overfit to specific environments, making broad generalization difficult. The conclusion sums up MRQ's contribution. A general model-free RL method that performs well across different types of environments without needing task-specific tuning. By using model-based representations, without full-on model-based planning, MRQ effectively blurs the line between traditional model-free and model-based RL. The authors argue that in some cases, full model-based reasoning might not even be necessary. Structured representation learning alone can yield similar benefits. Another major takeaway is the lack of strong positive transfer across RL benchmarks. Just because an algorithm works well in Mujoko, Jim, doesn't mean it will shine in Atari, and vice versa. This reinforces the need for broader and more diverse testing when evaluating new RL methods. That said, MRQ isn't perfect. It struggles with tasks that require long horizon reasoning or exploration-heavy strategies, and it hasn't been tested against methods like PPO in large-scale tasks such as video games or drone racing. Future work will need to expand the evaluation scope to ensure these findings generalize further. The conclusion ends on an optimistic note. Better general-purpose RL methods could eventually allow anyone to train their own agents effortlessly, maybe even with a simple button click in the future. Thanks for joining us today. Happy learning and stretching together.